Hello, this is Survival Guyver, and today we're taking a look at the EcoFlow River 2. This is the slightly older model. This uh, I've had for about four or five months. Definitely needing to do a review, but um, I like to put it through its course. Um, I've been charging everything from power banks, um, lights, like flashlights. It's usually on my desk up here. Um, I've even ran a massaging heating pad for when I hurt my back. Um, in the last couple of weeks, so that's been awesome. Um, very, very, very handy. If you have a bare bones basic coffee maker, uh, we lost power because of um, Hurricane Helene. Uh, we didn't have it; we didn't get power back for a while. And between the River Two, which is this one, and I have a River Three, which I just picked up because um, they were the same price, um, and it's the newer version. Why not? So it's, it works really well on a coffee maker. Um, you can use it for a blender for less than an hour, a coffee maker for about an hour, depending on the wattage of your coffee maker. There's a lot of big differences on it. If you're running a hot plate off the AC plug, you have a grounded plug, a non-grounded plug, you'll have a 12-volt outlet like you find in a car. Although most cars don't have 12-volt outlets anymore, um, some of us still have equipment that uses one of these. Um, it also has a USB-A, uh, has two USB-A ports, and a USB-C, and the, I can't show you because my camera is my phone at the moment, um, but there's an app that you can turn on and off um, different segments, seems like you can't have the 12 volt DC on at the same time as the AC, it won't let you, uh, I just went into a sleep mode since nothing was being used, um, and you can use one like one plug at a time kind of thing. Um, so you don't, you know, break something. But there's five ways of charging this. And let me, in order to turn it off, I'm going to just hit a long press. And it'll say off, and it turns off. Um, nice big flat spot if you need to put anything, like you're charging a lights or phone or something. On the back here, see if I can get you a slightly better view of light here. On the back here you have your main charge port. So you can run a uh, cable like this, three prong into a, what looks like a computer outlet kind of plug. You can charge it directly from an AC outlet. And for this, you have two options. You can use something like this. You could plug it into a cigarette lighter on your vehicle or with the same kind of plug I don't have one with me to show you at the moment because it's being used. Um, I do have a solar panel, 45 watt solar panel that uses the same plug. So you can do solar, cigarette, AC plug. He said, wait a second, there's five ways to charge this. And you were correct. You can also charge it by a generator through one of the AC plugs. And you can charge it through a USB port. So you have lots of ways to charge this. Now, I know it looks like I'm struggling to move this around. The desk underneath this uh, piece of foam board is glass, and this weighs 7.7 .7 pounds. Um, so I gotta just be careful that I don't break something, particularly my desk. So I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna press the button to turn on. So it shows I was fully charged, 99 hours available, 100% charge, no input, no output. So, Let's put something on there. What do I have that I can do? All right, so let's plug something in and see what happens, shall we? So this is a Nikkor, I believe this is the HU21 or the NU21, NU21, sorry, um, that I used during uh, the hurricane here. Um, headlamps are awesome. Just, it's a little Type C port. And this should be relatively close to dead because I used it until it no longer worked. So I'm going to plug this in here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to plug it in here. And let's see what happens. So we're pulling about 3 watts. It's probably like 3.5 or 3.7. It rounds it to the next lowest number or highest number in some cases, it's kind of weird. It's plus or minus one watt. Um, so 
at this charge rate of 3 watts, I would get 71 hours. So, it doesn't mean that the flashlight's going to take 71 hours to charge. It's just that um, if I was only using a 3 watt draw, it'll last 71 hours. So, awesome. Um, let me see if I can show you input. How should I do input? I have an idea. Okay, so I have a crazy idea, but it's the best way for me to show you how input works in this. So I'm going to take this out. Put back to zero. I'm going to take the Rover 3, the new version, which I'm going to do a comparison video on. Turn this on. I'm going to take this handy dandy cord, plug it into the Rover 3. I wasn't prepared for this, so sorry. I don't think I'm supposed to do this where you daisy chain one battery pack system to another. Let's see what happens, shall we? You have to fiddle with this a little bit. Turn this AC charge on. Okay. Turn the inverter turn on. And let's see what we got here. So I'll just put my finger across it. Um, on a regular AC charge, it'll take about an hour to charge the unit. This is making weird noises because I'm using the River 3 to charge the River 2. Um, so it was already at 100%, so it couldn't really do much. But you can see it went up to 300 and some odd watts of input. And now it's back to zero. So let's see if I can run both at the same time. I am sure that this is not recommended in any sort of way. So I have a, a fire extinguisher nearby if there's a problem. So now I'm pulling a three watt charge out of this. My River 3 tells me I have 82 hours of runtime and 97% chance, 97% uh, battery pack uh, amount. At some point in time, this will get low enough where the River 3 will kick in to charge the River 2. Let me see if I can put something else on there for a load. All right, to add a little bit more of a load, I'm going to add the Phoenix CLR, uh, CL27R Lantern. Um, also used really well. Uh, you'll see it's on a uh, quick disconnect. I actually have this on a... Um, on a tripod. So this is some of my background light. So let's see if I can charge both of these together while still charging the River 2. So here you can see it went up to 7 watts. It's also charging. See the little lights on top. Um, unfortunately this one's almost fully charged. This one is nowhere near charged. But I got a 7 watt draw in the last 32 hours with a 7 watt draw. Not counting that it's connected to a battery pack that will charge it at the same time. This is not how you're supposed to do this, but I'm trying to stress the system. I'm trying to see if it would let me um, pull more power out of it. But um, unfortunately it's not allowing me to. I don't have anything that's significantly short. I'm taking my mouse here for a second. And I'm going to go through some information on here that I do not necessarily know off the top of my head. And so it actually shows a 240 watt uh, hour capacity, 300 watt output, with a max of 600 watts. The River 2. Um, it's the specs on this thing. Uh, See, it's weird. Every different part I show 240 watt amp hour, 240 watt hour, 243 watt hour on their website, and then 258. So, something in that range. <laughs> their website is not clear. Uh, dimensions on this is 9.6 inches by 8.5 by 5.7 inches. Um, it has a 360 watt max AC input. So, that's actually coming off whatever you're charging from, whether it be an AC outlet 
or another battery bank or power station. Solar input is 11 to 30 volts at 8 amps for 110 watt max. And I have a 45 watt um, solar cell that works out really well. Um, so it charges that in about an hour and a half. It's less power than the AC um, output or input, I should say. The car input. So this is what they're talking about, the car input one. Um, it's 12 volt or 24 volt at 8 amps, 100 watts max. The type C input and output, 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, 15 volt, 20 volt at 3 amps max, 60 watts. So it's a little bit faster than a regular fast charger. And that's for input and output for the type C. Sorry, that's that one. The USB A outputs, you're looking at 5 volts at 2.4 amps, 12 watts max. Um, cycle life in this is about 80% capacity after 3,000 cycles. A cycle is full charge, discharge, all the way down to like 20% or less, and then recharging. That's a whole cycle. Um, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So there's an app on the phone where you can turn different functions on and off. You can see how efficiently it's working. You can see its battery life, all sorts of good information on it. And the charge temperature is anywhere between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 213 degrees Fahrenheit. So freezing to sweltering hot and you need to go inside kind of weather. Um, storage temperature is about 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 113 uh, Fahrenheit. So below freezing to above sweltering hot. Um, they recommend they get the most life out of the batteries to store between 68 degrees Fahrenheit and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. You notice the screen just turned off. It does that automatically after a little while just to help save battery and just turns the screen off, that's all. So I'm gonna take this out. Drop back down to three volts, or three watts, sorry. Disconnect this, and there we go. And I'm gonna disconnect that in just a second. Um, so, this is not strong enough to run like a refrigerator, unless it's like a small mini fridge. Um, it will run a, a coffee maker for about an hour, uh, depending on the wattage of the coffee maker. I just said that like a New Jersey or New York uh, coffee. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you can run drop lights with this. You can run you know, your phone chargers. You can, in this case, I'm charging another EcoFlow with an EcoFlow. And the reason I got the EcoFlow I'm turning it off um, is actually really simple it was on sale I looked at Jackery I looked at blue I looked at a whole bunch of brands um, but when I bought this it was about hundred and sixty dollars um, and if I wanted the 45 watt um, solar panel it would be about two hundred dollars even that's not bad especially for something that's small um, and light duty that's all I wanted was something light duty so I can charge phones laptops uh, flashlights, things like that on my desk where I don't have to always have it plugged in. I could bring it with me as needed and in an emergency I at least have something that I can use um, that doesn't require gas because right now um, we're not that far from Western North Carolina where everything's a mess and as I said we had no power for a little while so this was great. Um, this again I had for about four months the River 3 which is there I only had for about two weeks um, so I cannot do a complete review on that one yet, but I'll do it shortly. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, just a smaller package. And some things are moved around that I don't particularly like, but I'll show you eventually. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can find this on Amazon. And there'll be a link straight to EcoFlow's website where it's currently on sale for $160. Um, I believe... I have this on here. It's 169 on Amazon or $160 on EcoFlow's website. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have both links on there just in case you want to go directly through the manufacturer. By the way, by, excuse me, by the, by the way, there's a five year warranty on this. Um, so, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, there's only one thing that I wish they had about this and like it's nice that there's kind of like a, a an indented tray at top so i can put my phone or you know, 
put something on top as needed. It's my uh, overhead lamp remote. Um, if you have cables like this, or even your main power cable, um, there's no place to store it. They do make bags online that you can buy that'll fit the River 2 um, just about perfectly and still be able to carry the cables. Um, but I, I, I wish it would be kind of like just built onto the side. And I have a possible solution for that. Um, I don't think I have it here on my desk. Ow, I just stepped on something that looks like a Lego, but it's not a Lego. Um, I don't know where it is. Okay, well, I had something here that, that I could have put on the side to hold the cables in place, almost like a 3M command strip of sorts, where I could put a, the power cable on one side and another charge cable or two on the other, so I could store my Type Cs and such. That would be awesome if they were able to build one that had some kind of storage for the cables. The River 2 doesn't have it, the River 3 doesn't have it. I don't know of any of the higher models like the Deltas. I have no idea if they have it or not. But because um, I haven't looked at them, they're well outside of my price range. Um, but other than that, um, let me turn this one off. Off, there we go. Um, so I mean, it's a bulky cable, but it's pretty long. Zip tie it there and connect it to the side or something. Um, but that's it. So if you have any questions about the EcoFlow River 2 or the River 3, which I still got to do the review on, um, you know, just drop me a, a comment and I will help you out as best I can. So there's the 2, the 3, which is actually thinner and just sits at a different angle. It's actually flat on the bottom instead of this one that has an easy carry handle. They both have handles, but this one's easier to hold in my opinion. Um, but I will be going over this review shortly, probably by the end of the week. But um, questions or comments, leave them below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, I will probably, I have some testing video of this one, me using a 24 inch uh, variable speed fan and a uh, and a solar panel. So I'll probably put those up separately just as testing, not full reviews. So you can see some of the abuse I put it through. Um, that is all. So thank you for watching and have a glorious night.